So what's the over under? How many times do you think the word responsibility appears in the totality of scripture? What's the over under? Do you have a guess? Uh, zero. The word responsibility shows up zero times in all of the Bible. How many times would you guess that the word believe appears? Totality of the Bible, how many times do you think the word believe is written? 160 times. Forgive. How many times does the word forgive appear in the totality of Scripture? 65 times. God. And he guesses on the name, the title, the presence, God. How many times that word appears in the totality of Scripture? In all of the Old Testament and all of the New Testament, it appears 3,999 times. Jesus, that name, that title, that word, does not appear in the Old Testament. It appears 999 times in the Bible. Pray appears 61 times in the Old Testament and 61 times in the New Testament. The word pray appears in the Bible 122 times. These are the facts. Good morning, good afternoon, welcome to Preparing for Sunday, where you and I take a look together at the upcoming week's scripture. This is for Sunday, July 24th, 2022, the seventh Sunday after Pentecost. And our text is Luke 11, 1 through 13. Luke chapter 11, 1 through 13. And do you have my permission to pause this here and go ahead and read that or have your Bible open while I, while I share this? Or do you have my permission to use this as a podcast where you plug in your phone and you're driving down the road and you are not watching the video or you're running or jogging or exercising and you're not watching the video but you're just listening to it? That's fine too because I'm not doing anything exciting over here, uh, visually anyway. Maybe not even spoken, but that's up to you. Uh, so the text is Luke 11, 1 through 13. That is the gospel for this upcoming Sunday, and we will spend some time with it now, and then it'll be read for us again in worship, and that's how we prepare for Sunday. So I went down through the facts. I asked you how many times... Uh, you would guess some of these words appear. Believe, 160. Forgive, 65. God, 3,999. Jesus, 999. Pray, 61 Old Testament, 61 New Testament, 122. The word responsibility appears zero times in the Bible. It never says that any of us should be responsible, which blows my mind. But it appears zero times in the scripture. These are the facts is that all that the Bible is? Is that the whole reason why we prepare for Sunday? No, these are the facts and these words appear and it is an issue of the text. But you and I are also the flesh in which the text becomes real. We are the interpreter of the texts. The texts are God's words to us. They come to us with the Holy Spirit. And they are ours. They enter into our being, into our community. And then we interpret where it isn't just facts, but hopefully it's a life. It's a way of living. Uh, we give these facts, these ideas, they're uh, sort of through God. God gives them their breath. And then we give them, with, along with this breath, a sort of... Uh, uh, coming to reality. These words come to reality through us, right? So I can give you lots of facts. I'm going to give you some facts uh, that have to do with this upcoming week's scripture. Within Luke 11, 1 through 13, you'll find what is commonly referred to as the Lord's Prayer. So this will be read as the scripture. We'll pray it together, if I don't forget it, as part of the worship service. But let me give you some of the facts. Luke is particularly interested in this idea or this word of prayer. The Greek word for prayer appears in, let's talk about the first five books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. It appears in that a certain number of times, and it appears in Luke and Acts more 
on average than any other books. Uh, Matthew, 17 verses talk about prayer. Mark, 13 verses talk about prayer. In Luke, 21 verses talk about prayer. So that's the highest of all the Gospels. John has zero. Zero. Um, Luke has 21. That's the highest number. 12 of the 21 references that Luke makes are not present anywhere else in the Bible. So some of them overlap, some of them don't. Luke also wrote Acts, and the idea about praying appears 25 times in Acts. So there is an emphasis on prayer inside of Luke, and we get this Lord's Prayer. Even though it appears in other Gospels, Luke has a particular power or emphasis upon it. And these are just the facts. Um, the idea of petitioning God, like uh, as a type of or way of prayer, that appears one time in Matthew, zero times in Mark, ten times in Luke, zero times in John, seven times in Acts. So beyond the word prayer, petitioning, begging God for something happens more often in Luke, which is a form of prayer, I would say. And these are the facts, okay? Uh, requesting, asking God for something, uh, making a request of God. That word or that idea appears 12 times in Matthew. It appears 29 times in Mark, 32 times in Luke, 29 times in John, and 9 times in Acts. So again, these are the facts. This idea of prayer is particularly emphasized within the Gospel of Luke and then in its sequel, the Book of Acts. And these are the facts. I can lay out the facts for you. Um, these words all reference requests that are made of Jesus or made of God or particular times that Jesus goes away to pray or asks the disciples to pray or teaches them how to pray. And this just happens more in Luke than anywhere else. Luke includes comments about Jesus praying that aren't found in the other Gospels. Luke emphasizes prayer, and these are just the facts. In Luke 3.21, Jesus prays before his baptism. That's the only Gospel that says that. In Luke 6.12, Jesus spends the night uh, praying before he selects the twelve disciples. This is the only Gospel that tells us that. In Luke 9, 18, uh, Jesus ah, prays before asking the disciples, who do you say that I am? That's the only gospel where Jesus, Jesus asks, who do you say I am in all of them? This is the only one that he prays before he does that. In Luke 9, 28 and 29, Jesus prays on the mountain before the transfiguration. This is a story that appears in other gospels, but only in Luke does he pray before it. In Luke 11, 1, Jesus is praying before the disciples teach, ask, them to, ask him to teach them how to pray. In Luke 11, 1, which is the start of this week's scripture, this week's gospel, Jesus is praying before the disciples ask him to teach them to pray. And this is the only way that that story is told. Luke puts a particular emphasis on the idea of speaking to God of prayer. That word appears uh, 61 times in the Old Testament, 61 times in the New Testament, 122 times total, and Luke has a particular emphasis on this, and that is simply the fact. These are simply the facts. I am just putting out numbers, facts and figures, that talk to you about the reality of what's going on, okay? Um, Jesus uh, goes up the hills to pray. Uh, that happens all the time in all of the Gospels. Uh, but Luke emphasizes that, has all those references and more. Uh, Jesus it tells parables in Luke that are about prayer that are only found in Luke. Luke 11, 5 through 8, which is in this week's Gospel, is one of those instances. That also happens in Luke 18, uh, twice, the widow and the judge and the Pharisee and the tax collector, and these are the facts. Luke tells, has Jesus tell three parables about prayer that none of the other Gospels tell us. Um, the other synoptic Gospels, 
Matthew and Mark uh, are all sort of quoted in Luke, the same as they're quoted in Matthew and Mark, but then he ups the ante and has Jesus pray more and tell more parables about prayer, which affects the reading from Luke chapter 11 because prayer is part of the emphasis of this. Now, this is a divergence a little bit, and you won't be shocked if you know me that I know how to diverge. Um, this idea of praying after he teaches the Lord's Prayer is also connected to the last couple weeks, the idea of hospitality. Prayer is an openness to God, which makes us open to others. That's the way Luke tells us about that. It, it, it helps us be in relationship, in relationship with God, in relationship with others. Luke sets the teaching of the Lord's Prayer within the context of hospitality. Someone knocking on your door and asking for something and giving it to them or not is an issue of hospitality. And that's the same context that Jesus sets this discussion of prayer into. These are the facts. You could slow this down, you could play this again, you could look up the verses that I'm referencing. Luke just talks about prayer. Jesus talks about prayer in Luke more than anywhere else. I can't help it. I'm just telling you the facts. But is that all this is? Are these just facts? Or are these something that we are meant to experience? You aren't just a person who is thrown and are a receiver of facts. You're also the person who is the interpreter of these texts. You are the baptized one filled with the Holy Spirit that helps bring them to life in our world. Why do we pray? Why is prayer important to you or to our community? Well, for one thing, uh, people who pray tend to be healthier. People who pray together tend to be more clear on how they can live together. Uh, there are all sorts of proven scientific things about what prayer does to us. And this gets into more than the facts, but the reality, the, the, uh, the I don't know, the world that it brings to us. It's not just an idea, it's not just a fact, but it's also an experience that begins to fill our lives and f through us fill the lives of others. Do you believe this? Do you believe that this talk about prayer in Luke is not just so you hear the word a lot more than everywhere else, but that, it, that you experience it? What would it look like if we were prayerful people in the midst of our world? The world ain't doing nothing lately but pulling me down, right? And I feel like it's been a downward cycle of pulling me down for a while now. I haven't felt like I've heard good news in a long time. And, uh, you know, that pulls you down. Uh, the world could use a prayerful community that is in touch with God, that God moves in and helps us to experience and know who God is and how God might be at work. And then it gives us the sort of direction of the Spirit to know how to interact with others and to live out uh, this connection that God keeps with us. So really... I can give you the facts all day, but the point of this is why are these facts important? Why is prayer important to you? Would you be willing to pray more this week? Would you be willing for this to become something that you open your life to? Do you believe that God wants us to pray because it has an effect on the world that we live in? This is where the text becomes more than just facts of how many times the word pray appears. In Luke, it's 21. Uh, but this is about more than that. This is also about what it means for us to hear this idea of prayer inside of Luke uh, week after week after week as we move our way through the lectionary. Is the idea of prayer an idea, a fact that I just lay out there so that you can pass a quiz show or something? Or do you believe that by being reminded of the way that we can pray, that your life is deepened, that your health is bettered, 
Do you believe that your relationships are made better when you pray? Do you believe that our world is a better place when together we commit to being a prayerful people? If you're willing to wrestle with that, you move past facts and figures, and you move into how God's kingdom really comes, really becomes a part of our world today. No more facts and figures, simply a request. Can you be prayerful? Maybe preparing for Sunday is done in no other way, more than facts and figures, than by praying and by committing to being a prayerful community together, maybe all of this news can be reversed by the very love and power of God. That's what I'm asking you to pray about. Not just to sit with the facts and figures, although those are fun, but to also uh, experience the idea of what prayer actually is. So, with that, I will wrap up. I'll simply ask you to take a moment at the conclusion of this video to begin anew the practice of prayer. Your life, your health, your neighborhood, your family, our whole world will benefit from it. And that really is the biggest fact of them all. Stay safe. See you soon.